Hi, everyone. Hello. Good evening. Hello. Hi. How have things been going for you? Pardon me? How have things been going for you? Oh, they have been going fine. Villanova won last night. Wait, shouldn't you be a Penn State fan? Well, I'm a Pennsylvania fan. I am a Penn State fan, but Penn State doesn't do basketball so much, so... Uh, you, guys, okay. you guys have to understand uh, championships in the Philadelphia area are few and far in between. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so big. I grew up between Philly and New York. Um, so I'm tied to Philly, you know. Um, so I think it will be a while before PSU gets the, yeah. I think so too, Stephanie. Oh, that was a great game, Eric. Oh yeah. So, um, in my house, my daughter came over and watched it with me. And my son's uh, the TV is on the first floor, and my son's bedroom is on the third floor. And this morning, he said to me, "I heard you, I heard you and Jenny May laughing last night and yelling. What was going on? <laughs> I guess we were pretty loud, but it was pretty amazing." So sorry for any of you UNC fans, Teresa. Sorry about that, but it was just Villanova's time, and when that was just a great game anyway. That's how a final should be. It was a great game. So okay, E A. Here's what I've got uh, planned for tonight. Another exciting time with you all. Are we, oh, we have 24 now. That's great. Last time I looked, it was 18. Awesome. Uh, I just want to fill you in on some things that the Center for Enterprise Architecture is planning. Um, and then I want to uh, talk about um, the discussion themes. And then I will turn the class over to um, our team that is presenting tonight. Does that sound like a good? Um, plan. Yes, I'm recording. Thank you. I am recording. All right. So uh, I know the dates aren't on here, but um, I'll put them in the in the chat here. Uh, um, May 18th to 19th, the Center for Enterprise Architecture uh, is having a, um, which I'm the director of, and which is involved in the EA education programs here as well. Um, we are having our annual meeting and a professional development day. And the professional development um, day is going to be, um, we will have three guest speakers and I should, also note that Scott Bittler is doing the keynote. So uh, you've heard him speak earlier in the semester here. And the title of the event is Planning for Risk, Responding to Crisis, Enterprise Risk Management. And the focus is on EA's role in enterprise risk management. And so we have four people coming in from Cisco, uh, and they're going to talk about the integration of risk management and enterprise architecture at Cisco Systems. And you can see their abstract here. Uh, uh, and that, is, that should be a really good session. These people are, are uh, on top of things. And Cisco is, as you, as many of you know, you know, very, uh, risk conscious. And then uh, Jim Hayatella from the Open Group is going to be talking about business development and security in the Open. Oh, that's his, sorry, that's his um, title. The talk title is Risk and Security and Enterprise Architecture. So in the last several years, the Open Group has uh, had a focus on 
um, security architecture, and they have paired up with a company called SABSA, S-A-B-S-A. And so Jim is going to come and talk about um, that and where EA is headed in terms of those things. And then we have a gentleman, Bob, what's Bob's last name, Yost? Yates, Bob Yates from Microsoft Systems. He will be talking about um, delivering technology services when the unexpected happens, the role of enterprise architecture. And his area of expertise is uh, healthcare. So I think he's going to be pulling healthcare into his um, examples of disaster recovery. So there is a fee to attend. Where is it located? Will this be hosted at Penn State? No, it's going to be hosted, Jennifer. It's going to be hosted at Lowe's headquarters. Uh, several weeks ago, we had a speaker, Mike Fortuna. Remember he said, people call him Tuna. Mike, he talked about um, EA at Lowe's. Well, Lowe's is going to host us, and their headquarters is 35 miles north of Charlotte. And if you're still allowed to travel to North Carolina, um, your company hasn't forbidden. I just put uh, student rates up. Um, so student rate to attend, I put it at $300, and that includes an evening reception before the the workshop, or it's not really a workshop day. I gotta come up with a summit, I guess I'll call it. Uh, the summit, uh, and the evening before for networking and getting to know you. And then the day will kick off at eight. Yes, thank you, Magna, uh, with breakfast and the session, the, We'll get Scott up there by nine o'clock and um, then we'll have sessions. So if you're interested or if you want to spread the word, that's fine. I will have marketing materials up um, or out soon, but I wanted to give you a heads up. We're a little behind on our marketing. But um, so anyway, just to let you know, oops, sorry. Sorry, stop. Make it stop. Okay. All right. Any questions or comments on that? And then the day after the on the 18th. So the 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 summit is on the 18th. The day after on the 19th is the um, Center for EA annual meeting, and you are welcome to sit in on that as well or not. So I just wanted to make that you all aware of that. And, I, oh, and yes, and Megna has pointed you to the link for travel information, and I will be getting um, some other things out there. We are migrating to a new website, and hopefully um, that will happen soon. So any questions or comments? No. Okay. Good enough. Let me switch presentations. Let's go to the discussion. So lively discussion this week. Hmm. Here are the topics on the uh, internet of things. And the things that I read through, I read through and here are the themes. Ex there were a lot of examples, which I thought were great. And then there were, not surprisingly, some um, concerns over security and privacy. So I will just kick this off. Here's an example. Uh, here is an example. Is that hard for you to read these slides? There seems to be a, anybody? I think it's the slide background gradient. Pardon me? I think it's the slide background gradient. It just happens to be white right where the text is. Yeah, that stinks, huh? Uh, well, we'll just live with it tonight. I think it's the way it converted into um, 
the PDF on Canvas. But anyway, so here's an example. Um, oh, Giothi, I forgot the why. Sorry, I just see that. I'll fix that as well. That's yeah, okay. The, an example of FedEx. Um, SenseAware keeps tabs on the temperature, location, and other vital signs of a package, including when it's opened and when it was tampered with along the way. Uh, and Brian also talked about something similar with sensitive health products being shipped, monitoring this data while the package could be pinpointed. Oops, gosh, monitoring this data while the package was in transit was critical. I found it really interesting that the package could be pinpointed on a map via GPS, alerted of tilt, temperature, humidity, light, and alert if the package was open before sent to the target destination. You guys, are you with us? Do you wanna elaborate on any of that? We were just uh, acquired by FedEx one year back. So since uh, I didn't have any information on uh, any Internet of Things we are doing other than uh, uh, RFID that's in the innovation area, I picked FedEx as an example. Okay. And uh, I actually looked at it on the web to find out uh, what was uh, uh, their uh, big thing. And this was what I could find. Great. Okay. Brian? Is Brian here? Did he cut class tonight? Um, Brian. Okay. Here's another example from um, Patrick. Our Oracle Internet of Things cloud service is an Internet of Things platform as a service that allows you to easily connect, manage, and secure devices. Uh, EA plays a very important part in this process by determining our strategic objectives with the Internet of Things, uh, documenting our current baseline, et cetera. And Patrick also, it, Patrick, you're here. I thought these went in alphabetical order. Patrick, do you want to talk about that at all? Um, yeah, I, I guess I can. Um, <clears throat> Just the fact that we have, you know, we offer, a, you know, a cloud service for Internet of Things because it's, it, there's so many interconnected devices out there. Um, so, for example, if, you know, somebody like uh, FedEx, for example, wanted a cloud provider to store all that data um, from those RFIDs and all the other, you know, chips and so forth that are uh, tracking that data, um, you know, we have services that provide that. So we've been you know, kind of actively, you know, following, you know, where things are going and how things are going to kind of keep in touch because that's another thing I stated is that's a huge market share. It's going to be uh, upcoming in the next, I think I said 20 or 20, uh, 22 or something like that, or maybe a later date, but there's a large 14.4, I thought I said billion or something is estimated to be in that market share. So it's very, uh, very important to today. Right. Thanks. There's Jennifer. She's in a biotech firm. We use Internet of Things in general to monitor the status of equipment in the R&D labs and operations and connect off-site employees. Uh, this equipment includes freezers, cell culture, incubators, biosafety cabinets. Pretty interesting. Um, so Internet of Things. Uh, lots of sensors on lots of equipment. <clears throat> Vishal, tell us about your railroad. So uh, I'm really excited to work for railroad and uh, most of the people, okay, when, get, when they're looking from outside, they think it's a very old company and like, okay, the railroads are very old, but the thing is that, okay, we are flying drones, okay, which are connected to the locomotives and we are using that for monitoring tunnels and like, okay, the bridges. And so we are the first ones to fly the drone on commercial uh, in the United States. But the way I'm looking at it is like uh, Internet of Things. If you look at the concept of all of that, okay, the class one railroads, and I'm not saying it's my company because the class one railroads had been doing it for a long time. We have devices that are installed actually near tracks and we have the devices that are installed on the locomotives, on the cars. OK, 
के अराउंड द ट्रैक अराउंड द पी आर्ट्स टू मॉनिटर द हेल्थ एंड गेट दैट डेटा टू आर डेटा सेंटर एंड डू दैट देर आर देर इज अदर थिंग इज कॉल्ड एज हम्प यार्ड विच इज टेक्स ब्रेक्स द ट्रेन एंड मेक्स द न्यू ट्रेन एक्चुअली दैट इज गोइंग थ्रू स्टेशन और दैट इज गोइंग थ्रू यार्ड एंड के there are so many devices are built in there so that okay uh, i have posted a video also in my uh, yeah, in my conversation or in my uh, post there okay that is like okay it's i would say that those are the devices on steroids they are managed like okay and one tenth of a second that accuracy is managed from our data center so that is very fascinating and it's it's a data center actually, uh, sorry uh, it is a internet of things that we have been doing for a long time So why do they keep having train accidents in Philadelphia? So uh, one of the main things actually, when uh, they are going through that, there is something called positive train control. They are implementing that. Okay, but the rail network itself is so huge. Okay, we are always short of those things to monitor our network, monitor our health of the wheels and the cars and the locomotives. Interesting. Okay, are you still there? Somebody tell Vishal we can't hear him. So those things are coming in. The IT is helping a lot in the positive train train control, which is federally mandated, and we are going to do a better job at that. Right. Tell us about the drones. So uh, we. Uh, BNSF acquired the first license actually for flying our own military grade drones for monitoring our assets and we are flying the drones right now at a distance like okay at a short distance is now that the trials are going on with that but it is essentially used to find out like okay the tough to get places like okay the under the bridge inside the tunnel or even like okay going over the tunnel okay and finding out the the strength of the tunnel and all those things are very arduous very activities for for our uh, for our employees to do that right so we are using drones for that even like okay in a yard which usually goes from like about 8 to 10 miles long yard and which has like okay over 100 different tracks that are going and at any given time it can have thousands of cars in there so monitoring that also becomes a very uh, difficult task so we are using drones one of the things that we are using uh, we are implementing that now is like a data lake concept uh, data reservoir we want to call it as where we can take all the data and put that in and that is going to be used for video analytics so uh, we take the one good image of the assets which are on our network we call the railroad network as a network and we take the good image and then when the drones fly after that we compare that with the golden image that we have and then we can find out the difference and if there is a difference the authorities are uh, informed for like okay for burglary or theft or even the crew is informed for going and making the maintenance on that or even the trains are informed that something is wrong so you got to stop the train so all those things are getting built in it's a very new concept we started doing that like late last year but uh, doing the internet of things uh, it's little harder than it seems when it goes to that level because we need to try to get to like the data warehouse and the big data this is going beyond that okay storing the 32000 miles worth of uh, tracks and storing the video analytics we need to get to the data lake so that's what we are doing right now we are hiring the people from faa actually the retired or the past faa we are hiring the kids out of college okay who can be sitting here in our data center and fly the drones that are the other things that are the things that are happening we are working with faa for uh, getting some regulations straightened out because uh, railroads own the track and the air space above the track okay so we are we have the license to just fly over that so we have to make sure that okay nobody shoots that drone down okay if it is going over the track and they feel differently so those things are getting worked out so it's a very new thing for us too it's fascinating <laughs> yes it is okay any comments on that i think it's fascinating so all right john asked so literally just this week our parent company ceo why don't we hear an echo Parent company CEO uh, 
announce the start of a voluntary health initiative competition. So, John, are you here? Uh, yes, I am. Hi. Hi, John. You Tell us about this. Well, it's, you know, I, I forget how many people get broken up into the groups, but, you know, essentially, I think it's about people, team, essentially get a fit. And then each week, you just kind of your uh, steps you've taken. And it's kind of going after that goal where you're supposed to hit 10,000 steps a, a day. Right. And then the goal is, I think, to get the most steps per your team. And then, we do it uh, across the company, and then I think also there's about 1,500 companies that participate in this, and then so there's kind of a competition as well oh. against other oh. companies. So, oh, okay. so you have competitions within your company, and then competition between. Exactly. Sort of like we do with our blood drives. We have we always are competing with Michigan State when we do blood drives on campus. So kind of the same thing, but you know what I mean. <laughs> Friendly competition, right? Yes, the no no drawing of blood is uh, right. anticipated with us. So, but <laughs> right. right, Anybody else's company do anything like that? Ben, how about you? Do you guys do anything? Um, I mean, nothing. Unfortunately, nothing uh, competition-wise. It's usually more collaborative. Like maybe one entire site will be working towards a, a common goal and they may be, um, they're not necessarily competing directly against other sites, but you know, everybody is trying to in the aggregate meet a specific goal. Oh, that's cool. That's cool. That's a win for everybody. Oh, do you? Pinky, tell, what do you do? Oh, you're not talking? Okay, we're- yeah, Well, no, I'm here. I just needed to unmute myself. Okay. But they issue, they call it something called Bowling on the Move. They, they usually started around spring. It's probably gonna start soon again. And it's the same thing. They pretty much issue us pedometers and we're supposed to put all of our um, activities that we've done online. And and so they haven't done the internet of things sort of thing like the Fitbit or whatever, but but it's similar. It's a similar program, and they compete, and you can win gift cards actually. Nice, nice. All right. Uh, here's my dog examples. Oh, Brittany, are you here? I don't know if I saw Brittany's name. I don't think so. Let's skip that one. <clears throat> All right, security. So this didn't take long to um, surface. Security concerns are why my organization has not started using Internet of Things yet. Teresa, are you here? Yes. Talk to us. Um, we have to lock our phones in a metal box and not even carry those into the space that I work in. It's so secure. So wow. we just recently, uh, yeah, no Wi-Fi is allowed in our workspaces. Um, we just recently, they came out with a list of specific models of Fitbits that they will allow in the space now. Um, it's a highly secure, highly sensitive environment, not just DOD, but also law enforcement. So, wow, it's yeah, we're All locked right. down. Okay. Hey. Uh, answer, oh, go so ahead. She, I'm sorry, Eric just said, do you work in a skiff? Um, the in all the every space in our building is a secure space up to secret level um we have other areas that are technically skiffs to a higher security level that we also work in on occasion got it hayden hello hayden hello hi talk to us about your post here um so we do uh what we call a smart grid um, for our power company and which monitors all of the energy consumption for all of our residential and commercial customers. Um, it's a relatively new initiative that our company's gone through. Um, 
uh, one of the, the primary concerns for us being that we get, you know, addresses and personal information of all the, the customers, um, we have to, as we bring that data in, we have to make sure that it's locked down um, and minimize risk, but not lock it down to the point where it's unusable for our industry and sharing with, with um, the commerce commissions of the state um, that set our, our energy rates, what we charge the customers. So uh, we've really had to change how our whole network posture is, how our, our cybersecurity posture is around information management, um, and, and as well as how do we uh, secure the information to a point that we can still release some and show that data back to the customers, but in a way that um, maintains that security. Even our, our field, field workers, um, uh, the linemen, and the meter readers and, and people like that, they actually go do residential or commercial troubleshooting. That information is on their mobile data terminals that go in their trucks. So we had to figure out how to lock down that information as well as we travel back and forth. Um, and one of the, the other initiatives as, as Vishal was talking about some of the internet of things, we started looking in our innovation center and how do we bring in more IOT devices. And one of the new ones that we've looked at is installing gunshot detection on our um, street lights. And that's a networked, it's a mesh network of devices that actually go on top of the light pole or are part of the lights themselves that can pinpoint gunshot detection down to the type of gun, how many shots, where it was, and it automatically notifies both our company to notify our field workers and it, it notifies the, uh, the law enforcement agencies uh, of where that happened. So we have a lot of different things that, that have very sensitive information that's flying around and, and going from the power and utility industry that's in, in a lot of ways still very archaic in how they handle their information to becoming cutting edge and, and learning what it means to have this information and share it, but minimize that risk when we're sharing it. That's amazing. Um, that is that is amazing. Uh, Jayathi wants to know: Does it take a picture? Does the I don't. Know. Do you have a, anything that takes a picture when the gunshots are? Um, that I don't know. Uh, we're still in the innovation part of it, the R and D part of it. Um, we do use drones as well um, to inspect um, substations. Uh, we've been using them to fly around all of our high transmission lines. If anybody's seen on YouTube and some of the, some of the documentary channels, um, they show guys climb up helicopters on the transmission lines and all that work. Um, obviously, that's a very high-risk operation. Right. Um, so with the proliferation of drone devices and, and the way they've become so easy in, in a general sense to, to fly and operate, um, we've been able to use those to inspect even residential utility poles all the way up to those high transmission lines. Um, and those take pictures in real time feeds and, and we do the the um, the deltas between what it looks like when it was first installed versus what it looks like now and and be able to compare and contrast how those look to um, determine if they need an answer of something failing and, and things like that to so use it for storm response as well. This is pretty interesting. Very interesting. Um, did I go the wrong direction? Did I put that in twice? Oh, no, different. Okay. Security concerns are why my organization is not starting. We collect and maintain data related to criminal cases ranging. Okay, I think we've talked about that. My, sorry for your loss of your personal identification. Tell, tell us about that, if you don't mind. Oh, yeah, no, no problem. I, uh, um, I, I just, I, I went online with my phone, just purchased an arrow, which is just a, you know, a miracle grows, you know, hydroponic system. So I wanted to have some tomatoes during the winter and, uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> Uh, probably a couple months after I'd purchased it, I, I got a letter from from the company saying that my identity had been stolen. So, and they, they 
it was funny because they had literally they, they were pretty detailed on what had occurred but essentially there was malware that was placed on their you know transaction gateway uh that inter interfaced with their you know web mobile web uh purchasing app and uh so they said sorry and gave me a uh a, a, like two years worth of uh you know i you know I think it's called protect my ID, which is essentially just credit monitoring and looking for any fraud fraud detection on my name. So, wow. so that's that's the trade off I think of some of some right. things on the internet. So, right, right, all right. So I'm not sure which Brian this is because we have more than one. I forget. Is it Brian? Fisher, yeah, watch out for tomatoes. But now I bring up the example of the new device being pushed by car insurance companies. It is connected to the data access area under the dashboard and is used to monitor specific driving data based on the driver's driving style. So at one, what point does a device whose primary purpose is to track an object be used for tracking of an individual instead? While it may be said that the insurance industry only uses these devices to track braking and acceleration, is this the type of device capable of more and, you know, basically where are we heading? Which Brian? Brian Fisher? Uh, Brian Colvin. Brian Colvin. Yeah, my wife works for, uh, as an agent at an insurance company, Automobile Insurance, and uh, if you look at some of the commercials, they are pushing this product that you can attach under your vehicle to get a discount. And it, it tracks your braking, your acceleration. And for people like me with a lead foot, it's not really worth it. But right. uh, then my question becomes, what other information is this device able to track? And for cars who have internet access directly in their car, and it, I, yeah, my question is, I, I don't, I'm not sure, but could it lead to the transmission of your real time data? And I don't see why it couldn't. Comments, anyone? I don't know if it has GPS. I mean, most cars are internet ready nowadays so they all have a lot of newer ones all have a uh, navigation so they're all G gps enabled right so jonathan uh brought up the recent case with is it the Hulk, Hulk Hogan, is that who it was? Yes, yes, it was. Yes, that's what I thought. Oh. Google is a wonderful thing. Trouble for, but something from privacy. Um, this becomes a real issue when employees want to have some privacy. At what point can an employee reasonably expect to not have their employer looking over their shoulder? Is there a legal limit? Well, yeah, so all these are very troubling. Anyone want to jump in? Anybody experiencing any overreach by companies? I don't. Th th there's both the company side of things, uh, and also uh, there's like another side of things. Like for example, uh, the concept of a uh, Netflix and chill takes on a new meaning when your smart TV has a camera in it and tracks your movement. I know. Heather says, I don't understand how people expect privacy on a network they do not own. The the issue here is with uh, like sensors, like for example, your cell phone. Uh, if you take it home with you, like like for example, I uh, at my job, my company gives me a phone that I've got to carry on me basically 24 seven. Uh, and so at what point do I stop being their thing that they track and can do my own thing? Right. Gosh. I think the biggest problem you run into is with regard to employers, many places are 
at will. So to give you a, an example, it's not quite Internet of Things, but I got into a debate once over whether or not uh, a company should be allowed to fire someone who tests positive for marijuana if that person used vacation time to visit a state or country where it was legal and never actually did it on the job. Mm. And basically the end game of their argument was, well, our company rule is if you test positive, we can fire you and it's an at will state. So this is what it is. And when you dig into privacy of, of other things about what a, they can or can't monitor, uh, there's, it's really easy to hide behind the, well, that's just our rules and uh, we're free to hire or, or not whom we wish. Uh, there's not a lot of legal protection, so to speak, unless you're clearly being targeted. Um, there, there's not a lot there to protect that I've found in any regard, certainly not with, with any type of monitoring. Yeah, one of the only legal things I've seen uh, was I saw on uh, one of the websites I looked at, I can't remember which one, uh, that there are some states in the U.S. that have banned uh, employers from uh, requiring employees to embed a chip in, like, you know, like an RFID chip instead of issuing out RFID uh, cards. You just, you know, get a chip in your hand or arm or wherever. Wow. There's uh, employers overseas that are requiring that as, you know, part of their employment. Wow. I hadn't heard that, but that's terrifying. Uh, the worst I had come across was employers who thought that they were entitled to the passwords of people's Facebook or Twitter or other private accounts so they could check if they were the kind of person they wanted. I think. Are you kidding me? No, I'm not kidding at all. Wow. I couldn't name off the top of my head what state it was in, but uh, it's but too, too vivid for it to be a dream. <laughs> <laughs> we could probably narrow it down. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, be careful where you live. Um, okay, all these things are going on in the chat. I can see that people are, uh, I knew we would get some great discussion tonight. I know people who were fired over what they posted on Facebook. Wow. Well, yeah. That's still different than being required to give your Facebook password. That seems totally unethical. Yeah, I've heard about that too. Some states do have legislation that prevent companies from requiring employees to. Yeah, I would. I well, would. it's also probably illegal. I, I don't have a Facebook personally, uh, but I imagine that they have a terms of service that specifically says you cannot share an account or account password with anyone else. So those right. companies are more than likely, you know, asking someone to 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 be in breach of that that agreement. I would think so, yeah. Right, Eric says that's no different than asking for a key to an employee's house. Well, you don't even need a key. You just need to turn on the camera in the bedroom, right? Just the recent news of the bombers in San Bernardino County. FBI is asking Apple to create a routine to break passwords. Yeah. Okay, so. Right. <laughs> All right. Well, great discussion. Uh, kind of scary things. Uh, yes, Mark, some employees leave their posts public. Right. That that probably is more fair game. I mean, we have to um, alert our students before they go and interview. Uh, you know, really, you've got to clean up what's what um, is on your Facebook or they don't even, students nowadays don't use Facebook like they used to. They use things like Snapchat and it goes away. Um, but we have to um, talk to students about that. And you know, once it's out there, there are now business, there are businesses, right? That you can hire to clean up, um, or at least try to clean up what's out there on the internet about you. Yeah, it's not just uh, like embarrassing for an, an employer to find information that's out there. Uh, I, part of my job at work is to go through a lot of people's Facebook pages. Uh -huh. uh, and there's a surprising number of them who just have their legitimate birthday just shared to the public. Who have their what? Their work? Their full birthday. So like you were born oh. on September 2nd, 19, 1997. You're you know senior in high school. 
Oh. John, it is a snitch. Did you see that, Jonathan? 